Fast twitch fibers can be further subdivided into type 2A and type 2X fibers. A quick side note should be mentioned here. The type 2B fibers is often mistakenly used as a synonym for type 2X muscle fibers. However, these are two different types of muscle fibers. In this video, we'll only discuss type 2X as type 2B muscle fibers are not usually found in human muscle tissue. Type 2A fibers are also known as fast oxidative fibers or intermediate fibers. These are the fibers that the athlete in lane 2 was mostly relying on. These fibers can be considered as a transitional type between type 1 and type 2X muscle fibers, hence their nickname, intermediate fibers. Unlike the slow twitch fibers we discussed earlier, type 2A fibers are larger and more numerous than type 1. They're quite the all rounder. They primarily rely on aerobic metabolism but can switch to anaerobic metabolism if the need for energy is urgent. These fibers are resistant to fatigue and can sustain contractions for a prolonged period. However, their endurance isn't as remarkable as that of type 1 fibers. Type 2A fibers are also capable of generating faster contractions and higher tension than type 1 fibers, but less than that of type 2X fibers, which we'll see next. These fiber types are recruited for contraction after type 1, but before type 2X muscle fibers. Type 2A fibers possess a greater number of mitochondria compared to type 1 fibers, as well as moderate amounts of glycosomes, which store glycogen or glycolytic enzymes required for anaerobic metabolism. However, when it comes to myoglobin content and capillary density relative to their size, they lag behind type 1 fibers. This slight difference in composition results in a lighter pink coloration. These characteristics make type 2A fibers intermediate in terms of their properties. They're like the middle ground between endurance and speed. Type 2A fibers are particularly useful for prolonged movements that require more tension than what type 1 fibers can generate, such as running or swimming. They provide the necessary endurance and moderate force production for these activities, making them an invaluable asset for our average runner in lane 2. Lastly, we have the fibers that we saw in action in lane 3 of the Ken Hub race. This sprinter was mostly reliant on the type 2X fibers. These muscle fibers are all about speed and power, and they achieve this by primarily relying on anaerobic metabolism, specifically glycolysis, for energy production. This metabolic profile equips them for fast and high-intensity contractions. However, there's a trade-off for all this speed. They tend to fatigue more quickly compared to other muscle fiber types. This happens because the lactate produced as a byproduct of anaerobic metabolism causes a local acidosis, increasing muscle fatigability. Type 2X fibers also have a substantial glycogen depot, like a nitrous boost for a race car. This reserve glycogen supply allows for the rapid release of glucose, providing the energy needed for quick and forceful contractions. Morphologically, these fibers are larger in diameter and appear whiter in color. This unique appearance is attributed to their limited reliance on oxidative phosphorylation, resulting in a lower density of mitochondria, capillary structures, and myoglobin content. So type 2X fibers are the go-to choice for explosive, short bursts of anaerobic effort. Activities like weightlifting, sprinting, and jumping predominantly recruit these muscle fibers. They are the muscle workhorses responsible for generating rapid and powerful muscular contractions, just like our sprinter in lane 3, leaving nothing but a streak of speed in their wake. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.